side, fourth row near the end. Morning, Coach. Mike Barber, Richmond Times <clears throat> Dispatch. I'm curious, what has been your experience in terms of how prevalent tampering is with players who are maybe not yet in the transfer portal? How big a concern is that, and do you have any solutions for policing it? Um, first off, Mike, how you doing? But I think it's a big concern. Um, my experience, I, I mean, I just don't do it, so I don't have to really worry about that. Uh, you get a lot of kids want to go to the school. They try to reach out, but just try to stay away from those things. You know, that's not something that we're willing to do. We don't want to break any rules. So I just really stay away from that. You know, once they hit the portal, then we could talk. You're not in the portal. We got a team that just looks directly at the portal. If you're not in the portal, we're not going to talk to you. Coach, to your right, front row, right in front of you. Coach Dan Tortora, wake up call DT.com. How are you? I'm doing well. And yourself, Dan? Doing well. Looking at coming into this team and, and utilizing the transfer portal as well as true freshmen coming in and returning players, family's important to you, not just saying the word, but actually living that way. How has this started to come together as a cohesive group going in the same direction from freshmen to transfers to returners? I think well, um, what we did when it came to transfers, we only got guys that were truly, like there's a saying that I have like, uh, DART is our core values, but then I go committed, care, and trust. And if you look at all the guys that we brought in, I think they're truly committed to not just themselves, but to winning, to the bigger piece of the program. They truly care, and then I can trust them. You know, and the teammates can do the same thing. So us having an opportunity of going get Kyle McCord and him coming in, um, us having an opportunity of getting a Fidel Diggs, and then you know we had Justin Bear, Marlo Wax, LaQuint Allen, all those guys stay there to be able to gel it all together. Our family piece is starting to come together. At first, I wouldn't have been able to tell you that we were a family because we just knew each other and we didn't go through any rough times. But now we're becoming a better family. Coach, to your left, third row, almost towards the end there. Hey, Coach, Tony Syracuse from Last Word on Sports. How are you making up? <laughs> I'm doing all right, thanks. How are you? Great. And welcome to the new job. Part of your first year, though, you guys have to adapt to the new conference as much as anyone because you've got to go out to the West Coast to play. The other day, we, we heard from Stanford and Cal coaches about the preparations they're making to come out east. What kind of preparations have you guys already started to kind of go through that process of having to play a game all the way out there and late in the season? I mean, it, it all, I think time comes. I think with that, it's like a two-week base you got to get ready for. So it'll be like two weeks before we'll start to possibly practice sometimes during the time of the game, making sure all that stuff works. But I mean, we still got to play 60 minutes, right? I think these kids are young enough. I know when I was young, I go to the West Coast. I'm not going to bed if I get there, no matter what time it is on the East Coast. So when I get over there, I make sure we do the same things. But uh, We'll just go over there and have fun. You know, excited to be able to go and play on the West Coast. But we'll adapt as it comes week to week. Mainly, we're just going to worry about getting into camp right now, and then we'll let that come handle itself when it gets to us. Coach, from the podium, what does accomplished greatness mean to you? Uh, accomplished greatness just means uh, consistent, like every day. You know, you won't have greatness every single day, but as long as you continue to work, you'll get to where you're trying to get to. And um, I think that's truly a great slogan, especially for our conference, because we're competitive. If you look at all the coaches in this conference that I get an opportunity of coaching with, um, there's some fine men in this conference, a lot of national championships. So I think that's the perfect slogan for this conference. Uh, just overall, you know, all sports, football, basketball, lacrosse, just everything there is. Um, I think it's a great slogan and just means consistency. Just continue to work to make to, until you get to your end goal. Let's go back to Dan right in front of you, first row. Coach, in this world, obviously, a lot of people are looking at wins and losses. They're looking at the transfer portal. They're looking at money in NIL. But you go beyond that. You talk a lot about your faith. You also are big on being a part of the community. And I want to say thank you to you and the team, first and foremost, for what you're doing in Syracuse, because that's my hometown. Just what you could say about going beyond wins and losses, beyond the money, beyond all those things that are always a topic of conversation, to helping the community and making sure that that faith is forward? Uh, first and foremost, like faith is really important to me. I think a lot of people say it, they'll get up on the podium and say, I want to thank God first and foremost, uh, but they don't live it on a daily basis. Um, our core values, like it was dark, you know, that's our identity, who we are, just being detailed, accountable, relentless and tough. And we feel if you can do that with your faith, you can also do that in the community. 
I mean, it just means a lot, you know, and I think that once they're doing that in their faith, they're doing it in the community, they're doing that with their families in the classroom, football will be able to handle itself. So that's kind of the main thing. I think the faith piece is the beginning of becoming a man, you know, having a true foundation when you go through those rough times in life because every adult in here has hit a rough patch, has hit a rough time in life, and when you're able to fall back on your faith, you know, there's no better feeling when you truly believe and you're a believer. Coach, back to the right in Mike Barber. Yeah, Coach, uh, you hear so much from coaches and, and players about building a culture within a program. I'm curious what the culture you found in the ACC is. Do conferences still have a culture now that they're so spread out across the country? Uh, what have you seen on that front? I've just seen a bunch of great men, you know, as coaching-wise, that I got a chance to be at the uh, head coach uh, when we went out in Florida, just being out there with those guys and just being around. A lot of greatness, you know, I think that slogan for the conference, accomplished greatness, meant a lot because there was a lot of great men. Um, what they're building on their teams individually, I mean, I think they're good football teams. I got a chance to watch them and it's just who we are. You know, I'm just worrying about really about us, you know, and our culture. But I think that you would say in the ACC always had a lot of really good quarterbacks. You look at all the quarterbacks in this conference, uh, some great pass rushers, some good uh, pass catchers. You know, we got good running backs, one of the top running backs in the country. Uh, yardage wise is on one of the teams in our conference. Then you got LaQuint Allen. Uh, when it comes to quarterback, we were able to go and add Kyle McCord to come to this conference along with the other ones that were there. Uh, Fidel Diggs, uh, defensive backs, you know. So just all those little pieces, I think that all of that like fits together when it comes to the conference. Coach, from the podium, after officially being announced on November 28th, you landed Syracuse's highest ranked recruiting class since the advent of the ranking scale, you did that within a 22-day period before signing day. Do you have that sense of immediacy with everything you do? Because that felt fairly immediate. Yeah, I just want to win. Like, I want to win. I want to make sure that Syracuse gets back to where they belong, you know, where it was, where football kind of started at, in my opinion. You're know, going back to Jim Brown, Ernie Davis, Floyd Little, uh, Rob Zonka, you know, all those guys that played. Tom Coughlin, those guys that played there, I want to get back to those same areas. Eras, uh, that 1959, 1987 team, I didn't get a chance when uh, Pascal only took over, when you had uh, Donovan McNabb and Dwight Freeney, Marvin Harrison, Donovan Darius, like all those guys, it was important to me to be able to get us back into that same era. So it's like a nonstop race for us to make sure that we actually continue to go and try and accomplish greatness and to just have these young men have an opportunity to show the country who they are football-wise. So everything I do, though, I try to make sure that, you know, we just follow it all the way through. We got a saying, how you do anything is how you'll do everything. So just make sure that I'm locked in because those guys are watching what I'm doing, not only as a football coach, but also as a father, as a husband, you know, with my faith. Once again to Dan in the front row. You, you speak on Kyle McCord and what he can be to this team with him coming in as a transfer, but being the signal caller and one of the leaders, if not the leader of this team. What did you see in him beyond the film that made you believe that he was the right person to lead your offense in your first season at Syracuse? I think he's a great person. You know, when you just sit there and talk to him, he's genuine. He's himself. Uh, he was a guy that has uh, recruited a lot of people throughout my time of uh, being a coach. Everyone started to change, you know, the kids started to get different accolades and different honors and they all switched up and he's been the same person. He's the same guy that he was as a freshman. And then I just seen him as a winner. I think Kyle may have lost two games his entire life, you know, once maybe in Little League in a championship and then you know, last year. So, I mean, the kid's just been a winner his entire life and he's just a genuine person. Um, I thought he was a leader. Got a chance of watching him play Little League and, you know, where we come from, like, He's him. You know, a lot of dudes is like say different things that go about it, but like he's a, he's a, just a good leader. Though. When you watch him in the weight room, just everything about him. Like I'm honored and thankful that, you know, he's our quarterback and he's the leader of our football team. Coach, your last question from the podium. Syracuse is getting ready to have a ribbon cutting on a brand new football complex. How will that factor in to that winning, to that greatness that you're trying to build into? I mean, if they come in just for the building, I don't really want those kids that want to come just for the building. But uh, it always helps just to for the coaches to just feel appreciated, for the players to feel appreciated on the football team. So I'm just thankful that we're able to do that, just to continue to expand. Um, Syracuse is a great community. Great community. It's a great campus. So for us to have, you know, just different dorms and different facilities and everything going up, I think it's a great. It's just always great for the school. You know, I really. 
I don't really care about the buildings, to be honest, but I'm happy that it's going up. It means a lot, but I mean, I'm just trying to play, to be honest. I just want to just wanna coach football and play football so I can watch these guys have an opportunity to go out and show who they are and show how hard they've been working. Coach, thank you. You can switch spots with LaQuint. We will spend a little bit of time with Mr. Allen. Folks, again, if you have already introduced yourselves, please reintroduce yourselves to our student athletes. And we'll see if we can get these four through in the next oh, 18 minutes or so. First question, LaQuint will come to your right on the fourth row, all the way to the right. Hey, LaQuint, Mike Barber from the Richmond Times-Dispatch. How has your running style changed or developed during your years in college? I think um, I always ran the same, you know, angry, you know, with vision and stuff like that, and just reading the defense, the X and O's to it. LaQuint, we're going to bring it to the right side, right in front of you. LaQuint, Dan Tortora, Wake Up Call, DT.com. For you in this offense and, and having Fran as, as your coach here overall, just what excited you about this opportunity? Because within a, a coaching change, some guys jump in the transfer portal, yeah. they don't wait. What made you stay and believe that Fran and this specific offense that you have is going to make you a better running back? Just knowing Fran, you know, from previous, you know, we're from the same uh, area in New Jersey. Just knowing him and knowing what he's about, you know, we, we're basically on the same page, you know, being able to play for him and, you know, the transfer that's coming in, play for us too, you know, just getting that bond with them and just everybody just getting the same, like, thank you. <laughs> to your left, second row, right in the middle. Mary Dentremont Players Lounge, how are you today? I'm good. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. So you enter the 2024 season with the 10th most receptions as a running back for Syracuse program history. As a true junior, how do you look to build on that? You know, just keep being me and just make sure my teammates are moving in the right direction, you know, being that leader that Syracuse needs, you know, and just being me, you know, just being myself at the end of the day. LaQuint, from the podium, you played DB in high school. How did playing on that side of the ball help you as a running back in college? I believe, you know, that helps me to just be angry and just to read the defense, you know, when I got the ball and just knowing, like, the movements that the defense is going to do, like, before it even happens and stuff like that. Thank you. Other questions from the room for LaQuint? We're given the time, LaQuinn, how about we trade you out with Justin and we'll have Justin come to the podium. Thank you for your time, LaQuinn. Thank you. Justin, Barron, we will scan the room and find where your first question will come from and it will come to the right side, second row. Hey, I'm David Hood with TigerNet.com. Uh, Syracuse, it, it seems like it, there, there's a new feeling around town. Maybe this is a new era for Syracuse football. New head coach, investment in facilities. Do you guys talk about that? You feel like you're in on the ground floor of something that could be special? Absolutely. Um, you know, I'm going on my fifth year here now. Um, and it's this is the most support that we've been able to feel from the city, right? And maybe that's because we're doing more for the city than we ever have before, um, being out in the community, doing stuff like that. but. Being able to feel that energy and the support from the city, it, it makes us more excited to play. Um, go out there and train harder. We do. It makes us more focused, right? There's so much more energy for us. Justin, to your right, first row. Dan Tortora, wake up call, DT.com. Justin, you've given so much to this team. You've played with one hand at times. Just what you can say about what you've learned kind of growing through the program at Syracuse and why you've given literally your heart and soul and a lot of times put your body on the line for Syracuse? Well, first off, it's it's what my teammates deserve out of me, right? I mean, there's no point in me being out on the field if they're not going to get everything I have. Um, and just even last year, right, like you're talking about the one hand, um, just all the work that we put in in the offseason, in the film room, and the endless hours, the blood, sweat, and tears, it's, that's all I can give to them. And anything less, it's it's me not giving them enough. Um, so that's really that for me. Justin, from the podium last year, your name, team captain. Describe your leadership style. It's changed over the years, honestly. Uh, last year was more just lead by example. Um, but now coming in this year with Coach Fran, he's, he's pushed me and uh, encouraged me to be more vocal and call dudes out. And even with our strength staff, Coach Smith, Coach JB, all those guys, uh, they've challenged me to be more vocal and really hold guys up to a standard and 
really just set the tone for all of us, right? Because if I'm able to do that, then we're going to be in a good spot. A follow-up, has that change been difficult for you? Yes and no. Obviously, it's uh, leaving my comfort zone, right? Because I'm used to, in high school, being able to just lead by example and everyone would follow. But now with a bunch of talented guys, we got Fidel, Kyle, LeQuinn, and then everyone who came back. Um, obviously, they're all leaders, too, so you got to find a you got to find a spot to get in and fit in, right? And being that vocal leader uh, on the defensive side of the ball is important for me. To your left, second row, almost towards the wall. Katrina Sacken from Sports and Culture Media. How are you this morning? Good, how are you? Good. Both your parents were collegiate athletes, and I just want to know, how did they affect your athletic journey? Um, obviously, they'll tell me that they would have been cool with whatever I did in my life, but there's always that kind of soft push towards sports. Um, my dad played football, my mom played soccer, so I have that athletic background, so that's helpful. And being able to pick their brains on what they see, either with my mom about how to compete, because she, she's probably the biggest competitor in my family, honestly, with everything we do. She still does CrossFit to this day. Um, but my dad, just being able to talk to him about the game and the way he sees it and the experience he's had and learned from him, that's really important for me. To your right, second row, blue shirt. Ryan Johnson, college football dogs. Um, a long time ago, I coached with your wide receiver coach, Mike Johnson. So the next time you get a chance to give his defense, his offense a hard time, please do that. <laughs> um, but sticking with defense, you're a seasoned d defensive back now yep. after your switch. Um, how much more fun is the defensive side of the ball than the offensive side of the ball? For me, a lot more fun. I don't have to depend on anyone to be able to do my job, right? Offense, uh, it's obviously a lot tougher. I got to depend on a good snap, the lineman holding up protection, the quarterback even looking your way. Um, and then him being able to get the ball there on time. It's just, there's a lot of variables that go into being able to do your job successfully at receiver. Uh, on defense, it's go make a play, right? Like I can do my job every play without having to worry about what everyone else is doing. Any other questions for Justin? Justin seeing none, thank you. You can switch spots with Fidel. Thank you guys. And we will bring up Mr. Diggs for a few minutes. Fadil, welcome to the podium, welcome to the stage. We will get the microphone first row right in front of you. Dan Tortora, wake up call, DT.com. Fidel, for you, coming into Syracuse, you still had a familiar face in Elijah Robinson. Having him from Texas A&M, what's, what's it been like to work with him there and here? Like, what those consistent kind of pillars of how he is on the defensive side of the ball. How does he command the best in you? What are those pillars for him? Uh, just me and Coach E having a relationship, uh, even before Texas a and like, him recruiting me. Uh, I just know what type of guy Coach E is and how much he care about his uh, just his job. Like, he want to work on having the best defense in the country, and I want to be a part of that. So him telling me just just be the best leader he uh, I can be toward the defense and just keep – keep doing my job and playing hard and put pour that into the guys and just keep doing that. So. The deal to your left, the second set of doors in the middle of the wall, hand is up in the air. Hey, good morning. I know we've come a long way since Coach Brown's introductory press conference that I loved and enjoyed. He kept it real, kept it 100. But for you as a player, how what's it been like for you to see his growth over this course of time? And talk a little bit more about that. Uh, just just me seeing Coach Fran's growth uh, towards the program and just every day how much, you know, he's just going to be himself every day. And like he said, uh, he he can, he can trust, he trusts in us and we we earned his trust over the spring. And just seeing that, um, uh, pouring that into the guys is just big because you're going to need that from your head coach because we play for each other and just knowing that our, tr our coach trusts us enough to go on the field and make plays is big for the team. Fidel, from the podium, you spent four years with one family. Now you're with the new family. How have you approached being the new kid in the family? Uh, I want to say I'm the new kid in the family. <laughs> uh, just growing up, just growing up with a lot of guys that's in the locker room, like uh, Elijah Clark, uh, Kyle McCord, Deuce Chestnut. Uh, they just take me in well. Uh, Justin, Marlo, LaQuint, they all uh, brought me in well. Like we're just one big family. We do things off the field and on the field together. So it just built that trust for us, and we just uh, just a happy family. Let's go back to Dan in the front row. Fidel, when you look at Justin Barron and the leadership that he's brought over the years, being on the same side of the ball, 
and seeing what he's done. How does he command the best in you? Like he said, he's calling guys out. He's trying to be more vocal about things that need to change. What can you say about that bond that you have with Justin? So with Justin, I learned, I learned a lot from Justin. Just uh, coming from a different school, uh, bringing a little bit of my leadership and learning from him, his, how he lead. And we just bring it, pour it into each other and just learn from each other. So just uh, getting that from him is big. Uh, being an, another uh, great leader, a vocal guy on the defense, is great uh, having that from JB, and I appreciate that. Fadil, your last question from the podium. Your resume defensively, man, you, you've done a lot. What is it you have not achieved that you would like to this year? So for me, um, I just I'm big on the on the team on the team goals. So I want I want to win. Uh, I've been in college football for for a couple a couple years now. So it's just big on. I just want to win and just uh, be the best version of me. So, you know, so win champ. Uh, hopefully, win a championship. While we while we play together with my team and just be the best version of me. Fidel, thank you. Thank Kyle, you. you guys can switch places, and we'll spend our remaining time with the orange with Kyle McCord. We'll take a peek into the room, and Kyle, your first question will come to your right in the second row. Hey, Kyle, this is Grayson Man with TigerNet.com. I just wanted to ask you about the initial decision to transfer to Syracuse and just sort of the feeling that you have that you're starting a new era here with Syracuse with the new head coach as well. Yeah, for me, it was all about the people. Um, obviously, I've known Coach Fran for a while. Uh, I've known Coach Nix on the OC for a while. Coach Nunn's a quarterback coach for a while. Um, and then looking at the team, I felt like it was a great situation for me to come in, um, have a lot of talent around me, and have uh, success early on. Um, and so I think when I made my decision, I was all in, and they uh, put my recruiting hat on, uh, You know, tried to, to get some other guys out of the portal. And I feel like it came together extremely nice. Uh, and now I think we have an opportunity to go out and you know have a fast start and you know win some games. Kyle, next question, right behind him on the right hand side. How you doing, Kyle? Good. How good. are you? I'm good, man. Thanks for asking. TJ Wilkerson, 90.9 The Light. What has it been like, not just coming into Syracuse, but returning home to the north side? Because you're from New Jersey, mm -hmm. and Syracuse, New York, isn't that far from where you grew up, correct? Yep. So. What has that been like, technically returning home? Yeah, I think, uh, like you said, it's close to home. And I think the people in the locker room, too, um, like Fidel just said, just growing up with a lot of the guys that are on my college team now is a cool experience. It's something that you dream about growing up. And then now to kind of see it come full circle and uh, being able to, to put on the same uniform as those guys, it's pretty sweet. Kyle, right side, front row, right in front of you. Dan Tortora, wake up call, DT.com. Kyle. When you looked at Syracuse and you looked at the weapons that you would have, obviously some of the guys came in afterward, but mm -hmm. looking at the weapons that you have as the quarterback of this team, how would you describe what this offense is going to be like this season? And was there someone or a couple guys that attracted you to the program? Yeah, I think uh, we'll be dynamic. Uh, I, th I think at every single position, offensive line, running back, tight end, receiver, uh, we have a lot of great weapons. Um, some that were there last year, like OG and uh, LaQuint. And then some new guys like Yazid Haynes, Jackson Meeks, who came in from the portal. Um, and so I'm excited. I'm excited to get going. I think we had a really good start uh, in spring ball. And now uh, went out and got uh, Savion Washington from Colorado in the portal, a good addition to the O-line. Um, so I feel like we'll be dynamic. I feel like uh, the toughness is definitely there. Um, so I think if we can combine those two things, we'll, we'll be off to a good start. Kyle, from the podium, you're a two-time academic all-conference member. Let's imagine that we've got a bunch of freshmen in the room. What advice would you give them about maintaining that balance between athletics and academics? Yeah, I think when you decide to, to go to a college, the first thing that you look at is the academics um, and being able to, to have a full ride um, at a great school like Syracuse and getting a degree from here um, you know, will last me a lot longer than my football career ever will. And uh, I think having those connections and, and meeting some of the people that I have um, at Syracuse has been great. And so I think that, that was kind of priority number one. Um, when I came here, they, they sat me down with uh, the president of Newhouse, which is the communication school. Um, so like I said, I think having those connections and having that experience, uh, like I said, will last me a long time. Left side, first row. Hey, Kyle, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm good. Madison Heretzik from Newhouse Sports Media Center. I was wondering, a lot of people talk about the different styles of offense and defense from different conferences. So from your perspective, 
Have you seen that? Have you seen that transition from playing in a Big Ten style offense to now ACC? I know it's only been a little bit of spring ball, but have you noticed it at all, or is it all pretty much the same type type of football for you? Yeah, I think it's case by case. Um, I think the offense we run here is similar to the one I was at you know, at Ohio State. Um, but I think you look across the conference. Uh, there's a lot of great quarterbacks in this conference, um, you know. So I think teams are going to obviously try to pass the ball. I know in the Big Ten. Some of those teams will run the ball all game and, you know, pass 10 times a game. Um, so I, I think, you know, the, the quarterbacks uh, in the ACC, in my opinion, are, are top notch. Um, and so I, I think there will be some games that, you know, we might get into a little bit of a shootout this year. But I think the talent wise is, is, is there. And like I said, I think it's case by case for, for each team. Kyle, we're going to go back to Dan in the front row. Now, coming from Ohio State, you obviously not only know all the competition inside of the Big Ten, but you know what it's like to be on the national stage and, and fight toward a national championship. It's been many years for Syracuse to be anywhere close to that. What makes you believe that this team this season, with you as their leader, mm -hmm. can move forward into a place that you're familiar with, which is the national stage? Yeah, I think Coach Fran coming from Georgia, similar school, uh, who's been there, who's won it, uh, and he's brought that same pedigree here. And I think on top of that, the people around me, the players around me, I think are top notch. Um, I think when you look at the team last year, having all the top guys like uh, Aranda and Justin and Marlo all decide to come back, LaCoin as well. And then what we did in the portal and I think coming together that quickly, uh, like Fidel was just talking about how close we are and um, you know, it's like a family. So I think when you just combine all those those elements, the culture, the, the people, the players, all that, um, I think that's when uh, you know you get it. You give yourself opportunity to win. Kyle, your last question will come from TJ, right hand side, third row. Kyle, this one of the nicknames for this conference has been Conference of the Quarterbacks. Where do you fit inside of that, in your opinion? Uh, I guess we'll see. Um, you know, I'm not one to stand up here and you know, make predictions or whatever. Um, but I'm confident in my game. I'm confident in the, in the players around me. Um, and so more than anything, I'm excited to play. I uh, still have a little bit of a sour taste in my mouth from the last time I was on the field against Michigan. So uh, I've been eager to, to get back out in the field and start competing. Kyle, thank you. Syracuse, thanks, good luck this year. Thanks. Folks, we're due back here at the top of the hour at 12 o'clock with Clemson. We will see you then.